taxi very close to Tiruvannamala and I saw the sign and so it was very much something happening inside of me like I really something was touching something was some something was en en energy was there before I came to this place So nearly everybody here has started off with some med meditation classes, yoga classes, um, maybe breathing techniques, some kind of spiritual uh, techniques. And maybe these techniques, uh, you gradually became um, good at making these techniques and you got a good benefit. Your mind became quieter and um, something started to change in your life you know? and so this has led you to come at some point to this question who am I you know? and you also maybe come to the point where if you like your being is talking to you so if you are seeking uh, something inside I think uh, Arunachala will find you, will make you come here. It doesn't matter how, yeah. Mm. It might take longer, but uh, then you have to end up here. It's not just about listening to Premananda. There's 50 or 60 lovely people here who have a very quiet energy. We're supporting our, each other. You know? mm. It's just like a, um, a field of energy in which it's much easier to become quiet. You know? This is a beautiful beginning that you can go to meetings, you can tune into the energy field in the meeting, and you can find with that support, you can find your own peace. And you, you realize that your mind is getting quieter and this is touching you, you know, it touches something inside. Probably what's happening is that you're moving from a focus to your thoughts and your mind, and you're moving to something deeper inside, which we can call being, your yeah. being. So it's your being, it's not the teacher's being, it's your being. There's a lot of discovery. Yeah. Arunachala, um, even Premananda, I met, uh, I met him for the second time, and also some of the, uh, regular members of the community. So everything is quite uh, new in some way. Ramana Mahashi has suggested a particular reminder called self-inquiry, he called it self-inquiry, which is uh, using this, uh, who am I? Yeah? And he suggested that you can use this to support yourself in staying in the being, before the mind. It's my third time that I come to this retreat. Sometimes things can become a bit clearer. You can see things more sharp and crisp. I experience that um, 
my constant no to life seem to get less and there's more yes. Um, if you want to go out, we'll organise we'll organise an early morning with some guy to take you out. through Bangalore to Ananda Ashram. The positive uh, Google Earth is, you know, nine hours. And we'll leave on this, probably leave on the 16th morning. I mean, it's a long way. It's, a, it's about 1,500 kilometers. Ramana Ashram is focused on knowledge, yani, your knowledge. And the Nanda Ashram is focused on devotion, bhakti. So the atmosphere is very different. And their main practice is to say Ram Ram all day long. And they have these three samadhis. So on, on day one, one of the samadhis is uh, active. And all day people walk around this samadhi. And they, they do a lot of social work, you know, charity work. There's an atmosphere of giving, you know, kind of giving. And um, I always had a nice connection with that ashram so it'll be nice nice to go there to to meet some old friends there and in the anand ashram it was it was it was just uh, love pure love and and like smooth and flow there is some energy still uh, in the ashrams, even after the masters have uh, left the body, this is true. And if you are ready to listen to it or feel it, then you will definitely uh, feel it at least for a few moments, and that's that's really worth it. <laughs>
So basically, self-inquiry is suggesting that you keep your mind focused at the source, focused at the self. Instead of the mind being focused on the movement of thoughts. Self-inquiring is saying, bring your mind back, come back to before the thoughts. You can make this inquiry through your normal day. So it's not really a practice. So this self-inquiry is, is an amazing possibility. It's an amazing possibility because you can become free of all this nonsense. When we go to the ashram later and walk up the hill to Skanda Ashram, and now there are quite high trees, but 20 years ago there were no trees. So it's been a huge job to regenerate the nature on the hill. So we can be very thankful now when we walk up the hill that it's, uh, it's very beautiful nature all the way up. I feel some, some special energy here. It's a kind of intense place. So it's a bit like everything that's hap that happens is more intense. The silent moments, they are more deep, more silent, and uh, it would be nice if more silence would, more silence would come. Now in, in the end of the retreat, it's something become lighter, more transparent, more flowing, and not so much like tiredness. <laughs> Yesterday and this morning, I was very touched from. Really, the patience Pramananda has, yeah. And then I'm also in touch with this love, yeah, which is unconditional love, which is beyond our expectation what we have from love. If you really get quiet, then your nature, which is there already, is going to express itself, it's going to make itself known. You see, you get touched, you feel touched by some moment, you see. Maybe you have a glimpse, you see. So it's not necessary to do something, and there's no, there's no teachings to do something, you see. Of course, this mind, this, this me, me mind, wants there to be something I can do. So by coming to this retreat, you've come to kind of like the advanced class, and here there's nothing. See. Okay, ciao. ciao. ciao.